everybody, so we're back talking some more Titan Season 3 on the channel. Only a handful of episodes left until the end of Season 3. This week is Episode 11. As I saw in last week's episode, things aren't looking too great for the team as the city has turned on them and they're all separated once again. Unfortunately, things really don't look too much better in this episode either. I have to be honest right up front, this is probably one of my least favorite episodes. I will explain why throughout the course of the video, of course. But overall, just, just a lot of frustrating things in this episode. The way we open this episode is probably one of the more goofy opening episodes in all of Titans as it's just so goofy and cringe at the same time. You follow Jonathan Crane giving himself this full on makeover set to waterfalls by TLC. It's just weird the musical montages we give to this man throughout this season and also just the makeover itself. I don't want to judge too hard but without the beard and all that he kind of looks like a goober. He doesn't look really scary at all anymore. There was some hope that he was going to actually put on the scarecrow mask as it did make sense because we are in Wayne Manor now. We do know that it's locked away in the bat cave and we do see him look at it but he doesn't take it which is just so unfortunate. Choosing instead to sit down and talk to the bat computer and see his profile that Bruce Wayne has had on him his entire career. We have seen Jonathan Crane get roasted earlier on in the season by his mother, but I think the Bat Computer does a much better job at roasting him with Bruce Wayne's profile. Discussing how Crane has to control others since he can't do stuff himself, which is accurate, I will say, but you don't want to hear that, of course, especially with a man that's as psychotic as Scarecrow. Since he's Jonathan Crane, he has to project that charm onto somebody, which we've seen him do throughout all this season in Jason Todd and how he's manipulating him, but this poor pizza guy as well, he delivers a pizza to Wayne Manor, only to get his head bashed in and he's strapped to a table and Jonathan Crane tries to torture him, but he has trouble doing so. He has this sort of psychotic break inside of him. At this point in time, I'm kind of tired of seeing the Titans team broken up into several different subgroups all the time, but we are at that point once again because everybody's separated. I've been saying this all season, but I'm really glad that Gar's getting more to do as we do see more of the follow-up of him and Rachel's storyline. He wants to go find the Lazarus Pit as he explains everything to Rachel. Rachel easily knows how to find it, and that's their whole adventure for the rest of this episode. Their chunk of the story is probably the one that takes the least amount of screen time, but I just enjoy the banter between Gar and Rachel, and that's something I've sorely missed all throughout season three. And I think that is part of why Gar has not really been heavily featured because he doesn't have a main storyline unlike some of the other characters in the show. Because even when they try to incorporate him into the main storyline, having him go talk to Molly, Jason's friend, it still ended up with him kind of just being on the outside looking in and that just sucks. In this one episode, Rachel and Gar do find the secret Lazarus pit that Jonathan Crane has. Somehow there's bats in there, but somehow Bruce Wayne didn't know that the secret Lazarus pit existed. You know, whatever. But in this one episode, Rachel has done a lot more to help the team than some of the other members have. And that just goes to show you how important she could have been to the rest of this season and it's why it's unfortunate that she's just now helping in the last couple episodes. After last week's episode where she lost her powers thanks to Blackfire, we find Corey walking around the streets in this robe. I don't know how that's somehow able to keep her from being recognized by everybody on the streets, especially as you can very clearly see her bright purple costume underneath the robes, but it somehow still does. I bet you're wondering where Blackfire is after everything that transpired in the last episode where she stole Corey's powers. No idea. We get no mention of where she is in this episode, so she's somewhere. Maybe we'll see her next episode, hopefully. The interesting thing about this story though was we find Corey in front of the building that we saw a couple episodes back when she had those visions and ended up in front of this building but inside we see the woman and the baby that were from her visions and she actually wants to go and talk to them of course because you want to get some answers only for this really creepy bald guy to walk up and start demanding money from them and he's been influenced by the chemicals in the water and then he actually shoots Corey right in the chest like Corey loses her powers for like a day and she's already basically getting killed out in the streets thankfully though it doesn't kill her triggers this new vision for Corey to have which is kind of eye rolling to be honest but let's get into it in this vision we see her on Tamarind as a child and we have the huge twist. Corey wasn't actually born with her fire powers. Her parents lied and Blackfire actually was born with them, but they swapped them out at birth and gave them to Corey. So that's pretty lame that she actually didn't have the powers themselves, the fire powers they were stolen all along. So I guess in a sense, Blackfire stole them back. And with the added kick, we go back to the real world. We see Corey back with a gunshot wound in her chest. She starts floating up in the air and glowing blue. And this giant blue energy blast comes out of her and hits the ball guy as he's trying to run away. I haven't read every single comic that Starfire has ever Bennett in DC Comics, but I don't recall this ever being a thing. Like, I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, definitely let me know in the comments down below, but what, it seems odd to just have this thrown in wrinkle here to have Starfire's powers not really be her own. She stole them from Blackfire. I know that they've had some, you know, problems in the past, but this is a weird dynamic I wasn't expecting. So I guess kudos to the Titans writers for subverting my expectations, but it's just an odd choice to have season three. I mean, that's something you would probably introduce in maybe season one, but we're three seasons deep in, and now Corey's powers aren't really her powers at all. I guess at the same time, I am intrigued in the fact that what the hell is her new power set going to be? Because, I mean, if she had fire powers before, 
four. These powers are blue. What could they mean? I, th that's the only part that I guess I'm kind of intrigued at is what could they possibly be now if these are her real true powers that she always had. Last week we didn't get an update at all really on Tim Drake's condition after he almost died and came back to life. But he is looking good though for someone who just almost died. As thankfully Donna's finally made it to town after last week having that full on adventure trying to get to Gotham. And I do like their little team up they have here. Of course Tim is definitely being taken under the wing by Donna Troy because she's much more established, knows what she's doing, and Tim Drake is still kind of learning the ropes. Wish there was a lot more to say about their storyline, but it is kind of more of a setup for their storyline for the last few episodes. They're still trying to find the Titans, of course. They're hauled up in Tim Drake's family store in Chinatown, and we find out that the Gotham City Police is trying to take people out because of Crane. So that's their whole plan, it seems like, for the next couple episodes when they do try and find the Titans is they're trying to take out the Gotham City Police Department. But like I said, that's kind of like it for their whole episode. They have some fun banter. We find out Tim has a secret base in like the basement area. Otherwise, there's really not too much substantial to talk about other than that. We end over the last big story beat of the episode. Connor, Dick, and Crypto are all hauled up in their little area. And Red Hood actually makes a live broadcast calling out Nightwing, wanting to meet up and finish things for the last time. One of the big frustrating things about this, especially because it's hammered home multiple times in this episode, is that Connor really wants to help Dick out with this problem. He could probably take it out pretty easily. He is very powerful. But Dick refuses to let him help multiple times in this episode. And it's just kind of ludicrous at this point. Perhaps it's a pride thing because of the connection between Jason Todd and Dick Grayson and the Bat family as a whole. But Connor has superpowers. Like, Nightwing does not. It makes more sense to have him help you, but he refuses. What's even worse is that Dick blows kryptonite dust in his face that he got from a safe earlier, and crypto as well, so they're not going to be able to assist even if they wanted to. So, that is just so asinine to me. Despite that, though, I do think the actual fight between Nightwing and Red Hood is pretty awesome. All their fights throughout Season 3 so far has actually been pretty great. I just wish we had more of fights between Red Hood and the rest of the Titans. It has been very much a Red Hood versus Nightwing kind of battle all season long. Especially gets crazy when random bystanders start getting involved trying to shoot at Nightwing, something that would have been really helpful if Connor and Crypto were there to assist because Nightwing is only one person, he can't take on an entire crowd of people. The only major gripe I had with the fight as a whole is one of those gripes I have with a lot of media that does this, is the fact that you have all of these guns and he doesn't have a helmet on or anything and you're just shooting him in his body. Like, you shoot him in the head, that would make the most sense. Even the bystander starts shooting him in the chest area in the back as well. And then they throw the curveball when the bystander actually gets a shot through Dick Grayson's neck. Like, that was pretty brutal and gross and just to add insult to injury they start jumping him on the ground and everyone's horrified it seems like I was horrified Jason was horrified he runs away all the way back to Wayne Manor double traumatized because we do see that Crane actually did gruesomely kill that pizza guy earlier on in the episode and he also cut up his face telling Jason that the time for masks is over just where we leave off the end of the episode I guess that pretty much means that Scarecrow is gonna just have a cut up jigsaw looking kind of face and not put on the Scarecrow mask which is kind of a bummer but yeah I don't know like I said this episode all around just has very frustrating details and all the different storylines, especially Corey's and Dick Grayson's as well. Stuff I didn't really get along to talking about, the stuff with Rachel. It seems like when they're at the Lazarus pit and she feels something going wrong with Dick and she starts freaking out. I don't know if that means that maybe we're going to have to put Dick Grayson in that Lazarus pit because that's at least what it seems like to me after he gets shot in the neck and then he's getting jumped at the end. I don't know how he's going to survive that Who one. knows, I guess, but make sure you share your thoughts down below. What did you think of episode 11 of season 3 of Titans? Do you like the episode? Do you not like the episode? What are your thoughts and theories of what's going to come next to the last couple episodes we have left? Like I said, there's only a couple episodes left of season three, so we are heading towards the finale, and it seems like we're heading towards a very interesting conclusion, to say the least. Thank you as always for sharing my reviews. I really appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe button. Keep your moves, tracks, and the boxes in the channel. But next time, I'll see you guys later.